Coming up on Network Africa. Burkina Faso abolishes the death penalty. The United Nations gives South Sudan's warring sides a month to reach a peace deal or face new sanctions. And Madagascar's defense minister warns of army intervention if the country's leaders do not end the political crisis. Welcome to the program. I'm Joke Rogers. We begin in Burkina Faso today, where the parliament has adopted a new penal code which abolishes the death penalty. The Justice Minister, Rene Bagoro, says the revised documents would clear the way for more credible, equitable, accessible, and effective justice in the application of the criminal law. Local media reports say that this new move will pave the way for the extradition uh, from France of Francois. Campare, the younger brother of former Burkina Faso president Blaise Campare, who was ousted in a popular uprising in 2014. He was taken into custody by French authorities last year in connection with the murder of uh, Norbert Zongo, an investigative journalist. The top French appeal court is due to deliver a verdict on whether Campare should be extradi extradited to his country. France does not normally extradite people to countries where the death penalty remains in force. The UN Security Council has given South Sudan's warring sides a month to reach a peace deal or face new sanctions. The UNSC voted to renew some sanctions on the country through late July and to consider imposing travel bans and asset freezes on six South Sudanese leaders if the country's conflict is not stopped by the end of June. The six officials include the Defence Minister, former Army Chief, Minister of Information and Deputy Chief of Defence for Logistics in the South Sudan Army. The U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, said the U.S. had lost patience, thereby pushing for the resolution. Ethiopia, which has hosted talks between the government and the rebels, was one of the six countries that abstained, arguing that their resolution undermined regional peace efforts. Well, joining us to discuss this is an African affairs analyst, Okwi Okpala. Good to have you on Network Africa today. So do you think, Thank you. Yeah, do you think the deadlines set uh, by the United Nations to renew sanctions uh, will be met considering the fact that, you know, the country has already missed the June 30th deadline? Well, I, I hope so, but I seriously have my doubts. Because the animosity between the, the president and his former deputy, the, now the rebel leader, is deep. And several other attempts 2013, 2015 have not led to a sustainable ceasefire. So um, this measure is almost like an expression of Americans' frustration because America was the one who engineered it and uh, a good number of the countries like China, Russia and all that, they, 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 they abstained. But, you know, for the sake of Sudanese people, when we hope that at least this last measure we work. Oh, why is reviving the country's peace efforts, you know, almost always fruitless, despite several attempts to revive it? And it seems that, you know, the warring parties, you know, disregard whatever sanctions are being threatened against them. You see, uh, one is that, you know, the, the tribal issue, the tribal correlation to the struggle. Second is the personal animosity that exists, that now exists between former allies now that have gone that have now gone their separate ways and thirdly is the fear you know even when this for the peace to be uh, for the peace to be sustained the fears of both sides needs to be because if anyone is seen to be a winner then i mean uh, and the other one a loser you probably feel that the other person will visit a lot of uh, vendetta 
on him. And so these are the ingredients that probably the negotiation will take care of. But you know, these are the factors that make them very uh, go run back to their cocoons. Well, when two elephants fight, uh, two elephants of, fight. Of, of course, course the it's the Sudanese people that suffer. So, so yeah. talking about the people, it seems that you know they have lost hope after the latest round of peace talks failed. How, you know, can the warring factions come together to actually, you know, bring back the trust from the people? A lot depends on the intergovernmental authority for development that sits that uh, Ethiopia helps to, to, to host other countries. I mean, this intergovernmental authority to develop development, which has already been set up as a mechanism for resolve, resolving these issues, should be fully supported and uh, by the major powers of the world. And also, they will also be, I mean, if the if they, the warring five persons see them as having real authority, and then probably, and they have the resources, both the carrot and the stick, they may be able to, I mean, force this um, warring partner to come to the table and to agree to a ceasefire and to implement that ceasefire. Uh, anything outside that, anything outside that may not lead to enduring peace. But let African countries, world powers, fully support the effort of intergovernmental authority for development and, and then probably the, the peace people of so that's how to, to down we have yes peace. i was going to say you know how much influence you know is the you know au having on this because it seems as if you know negotiations have been going on but they have not really made a headway is uh, sometimes you know most countries don't commit fully I don't see I, the African countries, of course, they, it comes up every now and then, but I don't see the kind of commitment that probably um, they, they gave in other conflicts like uh, uh, Sierra Leone, like uh, in Liberia, you know, probably the East African countries in particular should take the lead, and the rest of Africa and the rest of the world should, should give them full support. But because, probably because, and this country, have, I mean, South Sudan has a lot of potential. They are the third um, highest oil producer in South, in South Saharan Africa. And they, um, they, they have a lot of potential, but they, have, they also have a lot of challenges. So this is a country that, if pulled out of conflict, probably have hold some promise. Right, so aid agencies have also accused you know, the government soldiers and rebels of committing uh, war crimes. Can they, you know, both parties, those who, can they be taken to the International Criminal Court and can justice be you know, gotten for the victims? For me, that may not be the priority now. Okay. Of course, it should be dangled that there's, I mean, that committing um, such crimes have consequences. Certainly. But emphasis on that may also make those who fear that once the down tools that probably they will be heading to uh, heading to jail immediately say oh let me rather die in the battlefield mm -hmm. so in as much as you can always uh, we can always dangle that i mean uh, to make them know that oh but the emphasis should not be on oh we are, we are going to we are going to send you to international criminal court of justice and all that so let the emphasis be on resolving the matter even though we may have that at the background if that has happened with liberia probably um the former president that was uh, that came to Nigeria, probably would not have left office, and um, the conflict may have lingered longer than and more people would have died. All right, thank you so much mm -hmm. for that. Okio Kwala, African Affairs Analyst, uh, thank you for speaking to us on Network Africa. It's always my pleasure. <laughs>